Hello fellow YouTubers, fellow experimenters, inventors, and collectors of antique shortwave radios. Well, I'm back again. I just completed two videos showing off my walking beam solenoid electric motor. In fact, this one right here. And I had so much fun building it, so much fun demonstrating it to different people and making the videos that I thought I would build another solenoid electric motor. Perhaps not a walking beam motor, just a solenoid electric motor. I wanted to make something a little more impressive, a little more powerful, a little more complicated. And an old television advertising jingle kept running through my mind. It goes something like this. Uh, double your pleasure, uh, double your fun. You should use two solenoids, not just one. Well, actually, maybe it was not a solenoid commercial. Now that I think of it, it could have been a Wrigley's gum commercial. But no matter, I went ahead and built the motor with two solenoids. Now you can see a lot of two solenoid motors on YouTube, where the solenoids are mounted in parallel, working in the same direction. To do something different, I wanted to put my solenoids on opposite sides of the flywheel, working in tandem like this, back and forth and I wanted them perfectly timed and controlled by reed switches. So I went ahead and built the motor and I have to say I'm very impressed with it. It runs really really well and people seem to enjoy it. So I'm going to share it with you now. Okay here you have it. The new improved solenoid motor with two solenoids. Two 12 volt solenoids here and here. Two connecting rods and a nice big wooden flywheel. Anyone who has seen my other videos may recognize the flywheel. I used it as a marble lifting wheel on one of my machines called an industrial strength marble machine. Okay, let me turn it around and show you the guts. Turning the motor around, you can see the shaft that passes through two press fit ball bearings. This keeps friction to an absolute minimum. On the end of the shaft, I have a simple angle bracket that holds one magnet here and some weights here to help to balance the wheel. As the wheel turns, the magnet passes first in front of this reed switch, closing the circuit, and then in front of this reed switch, closing the circuit to the other solenoid. Timing is adjustable by simply loosening one nut, holding the flywheel, and rotating the bracket clockwise or counterclockwise until you get the timing just right. Over here I've included a knife switch to disconnect one of the solenoids so I can see how the motor would run on a single solenoid as compared to a double solenoid. Before I do a demonstration I would like to pass on one helpful hint for anybody interested in building their own solenoid electric motor. You have to determine the usable travel of the piston. The piston cannot fly out of the cylinder and on the other hand it should not bottom out. There is a usable stroke that's somewhat less than the length of the piston. Once you measure this usable distance, you divide that in half and that will be the correct radius for your crank. My usable stroke is three quarters of an inch, divided in half is three eighths of an inch and that is the radius of my crank. Okay, now for a little demonstration. First I'll run the motor with both solenoids active and then I'll open the knife switch and disconnect one of the solenoids and you will hear the rhythm of the motor cut in half. Two solenoids. One solenoid.
Well, that's the story on my two solenoid electric motor. Of course, I could go ahead and build a three solenoid motor, a four solenoid motor, eight, etc., etc. But I think I'm pretty well done with the electric solenoid motors. In fact, my future videos are going to take a completely different tact, as you will see. Anyway, I thank you for watching. My shop assistant, Mr. Dillon, thanks you for watching. And we will see you again next time.